Hi, I'm Mikey Dredd, and this is Bowling Science. Today, we're gonna start something new, new series on the channel called Ask Mikey. We've got questions coming in in our private lab staff discord, and we're going to be taking some time to answer some of those questions here on Bowling Science. If you're curious what the lab staff is, it's our new YouTube membership program. You'll see right down next to the subscribe button, which hopefully you've already clicked. There is a new button that says join. The membership program allows you to join our lab staff and gets you exclusive perks to the channel. You get discount codes to our merch store, early access to new videos, and exclusive content every month. We are looking to add to that list as our staff grows and as we gain more partnerships and sponsors here at the channel. So thanks for liking and subscribing. And if you want to join and got any questions, just ask in a comment below. Let us know. We'd love to see you in our staff discord and let's get to our question. All right, so new lab staff member Amos had a question for us. I'm gonna read it here off of Discord. It says, I have a question that might be appropriate for Ask Mikey. How much does layout affect where the track line appears on a ball? Here's my situation. I'm a new two-hander, really new. Had a purple hammer drilled and is tracking near or over the finger holes, depending on how I grip. I haven't found my PAP yet and the ball was drilled with a pin-up layout. Some folks online say that tracking over the finger hole is due to the layout. Some say it's due to the release. I'm getting a new 3D offset soon for a ball league, and I want to make sure it's drilled up properly and fix my tracking problem. All right, so this is a common problem for a lot of newer two-handers and even not newer two-handers. So what's at play here is a few different things. The typical two-hander is a low tilt, zero tilt, or negative tilt bowler. That puts the track for most PAPs right in the line of that middle finger. Now, if you're one of those bowlers, there's a few ways to combat this, and there's a few balls that might track over the finger holes and might not. This particular question referenced a purple hammer. The purple hammer is an extremely low diff ball. I believe the differential of the purple hammer is 0.013. You compare that to even some of the mildest cores on the market, the mild cores are 0.030 and the stronger cores are well over 0.050. So you're talking about a core that is one third to one sixth the strength of a traditional modern core. So with the purple hammer, the ball actually for a lot of players won't flare enough to clear the middle finger if you're a player that tracks close to the middle finger. So if you've got say a 3D offset that doesn't clear that does clear the middle finger, your purple hammer might not because the ball does flare less. It'll actually flare less in the air before it hits the lane and it'll flare less on the ball as it rolls down the lane. As a two-hander, there are a few ways to approach this. Obviously, hand position techniques that allow you to gain more axis rotation are always good. Um, normally, stress and squeezing is the enemy of being able to create axis rotation, uh, but that is a more personal case-by-case -case basis, and it would take some coaching and looking at the stance and how you get the ball into motion to try to help you the most there. Another thing at play here are the pitches. I usually use a fit instead of pitches for two-handers that accounts for the natural low tilt of most two-handers and that also accounts for the ball rolling on or near the finger holes. So my recommended pitches for a no-thumb bowler, especially a two-hander, would be for a righty, the middle finger at an eighth forward and a half left with the ring finger at five-eighths reverse and three-eighths right. These pitches build in a small what dad called a Fu Manchu, but what that is is a performance fit where the middle finger becomes more dominant. I do roll everything reverse a little bit because most two-handers are typically rev dominant. So the other thing you'll notice about those pitches is that there is more lateral pitch in the middle finger than the ring finger. That's because the whole thing has been rolled towards the middle finger, in this case rolled left for a right-hander, and rolling the pitches an eighth or a quarter left will help get the uh, will help get the track off the finger. So if you're tracking close and you've already um, got your axis tilt, you know, in the seven to 10 degree range, you're already starting to create some axis tilt and you're still hitting the finger holes, uh, pitching further left with both holes also can solve that. For some players like myself, 
there are certain hand positions or certain balls that I use that are gonna just clip my middle finger hole. My axis point is about seven inches from the center of my grip. And even with 10 degrees of tilt, I'm right on the edge with most of my equipment as far as whether or not I track over the middle finger. So I do hit the middle finger sometimes and especially on my purple hammer or on my short pin layout bowling balls. Basically the lower the drill differential of the ball, the less it's gonna flare both in the air and on the lane. So the lower the differential, the more likelihood you have of clipping the fingers. I hope this was helpful to someone out there. I know it was a question I had as a two-hander when I was looking at why, why am I clipping my holes even with 10 degrees of tilt? And then as I started to drill more short pin bowling balls, um, short pin ASIMs create low drill diffs. And also I started drilling a lot more low diff equipment and even a purple hammer. And uh, I did notice that I do clip that middle finger sometimes. I do personally over bevel my middle finger before I put the grips in because I know I'm going to roll over it a little bit. Uh, it just decreases the chance of cracking and stress cracks. Um, and I haven't had any of my equipment crack out around the middle finger and I'm almost two years into two handed bowling. So I think that's a good sign so far. Thanks for the question, Amos. If you've got a question that you want to see on Ask Mikey, be sure to join the lab staff. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? Join us in Discord. Ask us some questions. We'll make a video about it. If you've got any questions further that you want to see, do put it in the comments below. I will go through once a month and pick one question from the comments in the Ask Mikey videos from subscribers, and uh, we'll pick some that way too. So if you're not in the lab staff yet or you're not able to join, you still have a chance to get your question answered in a video. I want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you hit that notification bell, it'll let you know every time that a video launches. That way you can see it early on, get your comments in, and it also does really help the channel and YouTube analytics. So we really appreciate it when you do like the videos and you do hit that notification bell. I will link our new merch down in the description. If you want to check that out, feel free to. If you want to save 10% off of it, join the lab staff. And as always, I'm Mikey. This is Bowling Science. We'll see you next time.